It said silent mode. Silent mode on. And that's what I said. Hey, 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 Onisha. Kevin. Paco. Devron. Mr. Constance. Otis. Ronnie Ron in the house. DJ Ronnie. Chrissy Shirley. It's a little chilly in my house. Kim. All right. Okay, Coco. Cassandra. Hey, Brian. Unique Shirley Wiggins. <clears throat> All the way from women. <laughs> okay, Talitha. Okay, Bain. Whoo. Whoo. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hand. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hand. If you're happy and you know it, hey, Paris. And your life will truly show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hand. All right, I'll see you, Jess. Okay, Big Daddy is. Good morning, Brother Sullivan. Stop it, Shanika. You know I can sing. Can Shayla, you know I can sing too. <laughs> Devron, clap, girl. Good morning, Talitha. I love you. Uncle Mario, Uncle Mike. All right, slime. Okay, Julian, I see you. You're on. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. You're on. Okay, Alicia. Frankie, tell Mir Mir. Mir Mir. I love you, girl. I'm so sorry I didn't get a chance to say that on Wednesday night. I love you, Mir Mir. Hey, Frankie. Okay, Katisha. Natty Geek. Coming home. Praying your strength in the Lord, Eric. Okay, Donja. Bubbles LaRue. It's good to be in the land of the living just one more time. All the way from Columbus, Ohio. Okay, Mo. Red class. Okay, I see you, Mo. Get a word from the Lord, girl. Hi, Kelly, I see you. Amen. Just us. Indeed, joined. Okay, now. I'm, I'm glad you're getting some word, too, on these I love you guys. Just give people a little more time to get in. And I don't say you get in. They just going from the bedroom to roll over to get their tablet. I don't understand it. I love you too, Mimi. Okay, Dr. Austin. Sherelle. Cindy and Joe. Hey, Joe. I miss you, Joe. I love your kisses, Joe. I love your kisses. I love your kisses. All right, Tasha. Tasha made it. Tasha Dunlap in the house. That's her government name. Government. Amen. Howard, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Howard, my brother. I got to get you down. You keep promising to come see me. Okay. Shanette and William, okay, in the house. And the fox. Okay. All right. I see you got two kings and a queen. Jeffrey, I love you. Won't say your government name. <laughs> come on, children. Come on. Let's get in there. Let's get in there. Let's get in there. Whoo, it's been quite a morning, huh? Mm, mm, mm. Come on, children, come on. My college students are displaced. It's been one of those kind of weeks. Come on, wake up, Pierre. Wake up, Elena. Come on, Bree. Okay, Jatera, I'm so proud of you too. Okay, two kings and a queen. I, I see you. Okay, okay. I'm proud of you, Jatera. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. And then when this is all over, take it off again. And I'll see you again on Wednesday. Amen. Amen. I like the fact that you're showing me some things. I like it. Okay, Renee, I see you. I see you. Renee slash Kenny slash Christopher. <laughs> Everybody. Okay, Crystal. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're missing some people. We're missing some people. I'm froze again. Oh, ooh. Froze again on my iPad. What happened? Storage almost full. This hit done. Okay. All right. My engineers. Okay. Aya. Queen. Queen. 
Risen generation. Okay. Yeah. Shout that out already. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alana. Come on, such a badass. Come on, Jean. Y'all come through. Come through. Come through. Mm, we're missing 12 toes. And hold on, guys. I got to. I got to make sure my elders get on here. I got to make sure my elders get on here. Okay, Sharon. All right. There you go. There you go. Okay, I see you. I see you. <laughs> Raven, you making me proud, baby. You making me proud. Okay, there you go. There you go, Phoebe. I was waiting. Sent green in the house. All right, Kimmy, Kimmy, Lady Grimes. Hey, Sharon Flowers. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, all the way from Ohio, Ohio. L-E-L, L-E-L. All right, all right. Touching Money Daily, Sean. What's up, Doc? Doing good? Okay, all right. I'm loving on you, covering you with the blood, boy. You're doing the work. You're doing the work. All right, Aunt, I see you. I see you. Come on, guys. Let's start sharing. So far, I'm missing. I'm missing. Uh, I'm missing. Uh, I've got Wilmington, Delaware. I've got Ohio. I'm looking for Trinidad. I've got Georgia. I'm looking for three more states. Three more states. Come on. Come on. Let's start sharing. Push those buttons, guys. Push those buttons. Push those buttons. Whoa. Push those buttons. Okay, okay. Maybe as well. All right, share, 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 share. All right. Thank you, Ashley. I see. Come on, Lexi. I see you. Come on. I can't get easier than this. Can't get easier than this. All you got to do is roll over. Okay, Jean. I see you. I see you, Jean. Shanika, I see you. I see you. Okay, Reverend Kat, Mr. Kathy, all right. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Oh, Pat had to run out. Thank you, Megan. All right, Sharon, I see you. Is she? Maybe she's my twin. Okay, 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 Sean. All right. Okay, okay, let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. Um, we've been working from the beginning, and I always have to do a recap because I don't know who has been with me or who has not been with me and who's just tuning in or whatever. So in... Um, in the year 2020, we just said, the hell, the heck, ooh, ooh, Sunday morning, the heck, the heck with New Year's resolutions. Uh, we were going to reinvent our lives. We were going to change our lives. And so we decided to reinvent uh, versus uh, have resolutions. So we decided to do it in phases. We were going to do it phases of the prefix re. So in January, we reinvented. And um, February, we redefined, and we redefined, hey, Sarah, Dr. Tatum, we redefined three words, three words that happen in our lives all the time. But because we look at them in such a negative manner, we have a tendency to begrudge them, and that is struggle, resistance, and adversity. Once we redefined in February that those three things come to make us stronger, it would be more it would be easier for us to live our lives without thinking that God has forsaken us or doesn't love us. Trials come to make us stronger, okay? And so in order to be successful or to be um, strengthened by Christ and to do his work, we have to understand some things just come, all right? And so that was the month of February, and so once we found out that our seed, our harvest comes from the struggle because pieces of our, our left places and that's what begins to grow when it reaches on fertile ground. And so now we're in March, we caught up to March and we decided in March we would rebuild. And so you got to go back to YouTube and catch up with us on rebuilding. Uh, we talked about the foundation of rebuilding, which is uh, our foundation, which is Christ, built on the rock. Okay, that's pretty simple. And then after building on the rock, last week we talked about the tools, 
Uh, the tools were a level, measure, a saw, and a hammer. And today, we're going to do a, a, what is called a uh, construction worker does after he builds a facility or he builds a structure, and it's called the lockup. Write it down. Everybody got your pencil and paper. Or, I'm sorry, I'm old. You all can type it. It's called the lockup. And in rebuilding, the lockup is the next phase for most builders because once the structure is complete and the structure was our character, we were rebuilding our character, uh, not so much a facility. And once you become, um, uh, work diligently on building your character, you try to protect it because you don't want it to be torn down. And so what's happening is as we put so much into making our lives better, you tend to be really protective over the hard work you've done. Now, some of you, this may not work because you're not working hard enough on yourself. So when you work hard on you, you are peculiar about who you come in contact with. Okay, I see you, Tim. I see you all the way from Ohio. And so now that I'm working on me and I'm seriously and diligently working on me, I don't want just anything in my presence or anything touching it. Ah, oh, all right. So the lockup is what we're going to be talking about today. So when a builder builds a facility, what happens is he puts in windows and, and, and stained glass windows sometimes and, and wrought iron windows. And then he puts on in the plumbing. And all those things are very valuable. You know, I hope you get where I'm coming from here. And so when we're working on things, things are valuable. And because of the value now of the structure, there has to be some type of protection mode that we have to work on. Uh, some of us are so lackadaisical that we misinterpret the word that um, everybody has to uh, everybody has to um, be a part of you. It is a poor divide, rightly dividing of the word of God. I am to be kind, and I am to give as I can give. I am to uh, treat others the way I want to be treated. But sometimes we go too far and misinterpret the word that says, I must be involved with every Tom, Dick, Harry, Larry, Sarah, or, or, or Margaret that comes my way. No. Once you've worked so hard on yourself, it's up to you to protect yourself from things infiltrating the hard work you've done. Does that make sense to you? And so when you're working uh, on yourself and you're doing all you can, and I'm not talking about going to the gym, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about working on your heart for it to be the heart of God. And so once you've worked on your heart and made it tender, poor teaching says you can allow somebody else to come in and destroy it. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's poor teachings. Because how can you give when you have nothing to give simply because... Things keep getting eaten away or torn down. All right? And so when things keep getting eaten away and torn down, you have nothing to give. I, I often remind uh, others of this. When you're on an airplane and the stewardess or the steward gets up front and they tell you what to do in case of emergency, the first thing they say is put the mask on you first. Some of you misinterpret the Bible and think that I got to help somebody. You can't help nobody when you're not worth a quarter. Oh my God. I've already insulted somebody and I haven't been on but eight minutes. <laughs> you have nothing to give, but you're trying to help me. And what happens is, it's a de deterioration of our people because that's a slave mentality. Oh, it's going to go all over the world and I'm going to get in trouble. It's a slave mentality to be so kind and so good that you don't take care of yourself. That doesn't make any sense. And so while we decided to reinvent, we decided this had to be a little selfish and invest in me. I can't get, keep giving you things that I don't have myself. Okay, Roderick, I love you, man. I can't keep giving you things that I don't have myself. And what's happening is that we're taught that that slave mentality gives, gives. I said gives, 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 gives. No, I've, 
got to, I've got to self-soothe sometime. I've got to have some type of self-care. And so while I'm reinventing, I've got to recognize that what he wants from me is to be the ultimate Zion soldier. Yes. Yes, not this emotional being knocked down by the wind. No, I'm going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I've got to do things that allow me, allow me to self-maintain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happens is we don't lock up. Yeah, yeah. We do hard work and then we allow something or someone else to come and infiltrate and steal my plumbing. That's a whole, that's a women's day subject right there. That's a whole nother subject matter. And so what happens is if we don't take care of the facility after we put so much work in it, then the value of that facility will decrease. Mm, 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 mm. And so because we're so busy running and chasing someone else trying to make us feel better than we feel about ourselves. Now we feel we have no value. And because we have no values, because we have not recognized that the hard work that we put in to ourselves, we have a right to protect it. We have a right to protect it. And you all got to get this. I've got a right to take care of myself. And if you're in a church where people are not rightly dividing the word and telling you, you ain't got before cheeks to kiss. All right. The number is low. The bottom line is I've got to maintain a standard in what the Lord would like so that I might draw all men unto him. And how do you draw people? A semblance of strength. A semblance of strength. Yes. Yes. And how do I become stronger? Is I invest in myself. I build upon the rock. No longer am I building upon friendships or, or careers or income. I build upon the rock. Seek ye first the kingdom. I build upon the rock. Once I find myself building upon the rock, then all these other things will be added. But we've been taught so much to chase other entities as opposed to chasing after him. And so when we chase after those other entities, we begin to get out of order. And our structure could topple over because we're out of order. You can't build a house from the roof up. Makes no sense, does it? Say it out loud. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. And if you want the abundance that Christ has for you, there has to be some stability and some rootage so he can trust you with the things that he wants to give. I see you. I see you. I see you. Yeah. This whole, the solid foundation is in the beginning of our, our rebuilding is important. But you cannot rush that. See, some of you are trying to get the solid foundation by just doing little things. No, you, the solid foundation is to support you. And so in building a foundation of where I want to put my structure, I must think closely about the needs that I have when dealing with that. And my needs are important, so I've got to build on the rock, the solid foundation. And then I've got to uh, do the things that would make my, and use the tools that would make my structure level. But one of the concerns is it doesn't matter what kind of tool you have, it doesn't matter how expensive your tools are, if you don't have the right foundation. I told you before, it's not a, an aesthetic thing. We, it, it, it makes no sense how we're building our lives. And so we're always taught to look good even when we don't feel good and then it takes it to the extreme and then we find ourselves fake looking good and our insides are ripped up because we take things to the extreme and when we take things to the extreme then we find no balance and if there's no balance you know then our lives are not in sync i'm concerned because our churches are full of folk who have their nails done, their hair done, and have suits with tags on the sleeve, but that's always cute. Have all that, but they don't have what it takes to weather the storm. Um, what weathers a storm? Roots weather a storm. Um, and that root is, of course, by the river of water, which is the water of Christ, the Holy Spirit. And so we have to be diligent about tending to our 
foundation. And so now we're in the process of locking up. And you say, well, Pastor, why should I lock up? Because you're valuable to Christ. You're valuable. He loves you. Look, 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 look. All these things, all these cameras. He loves you. And if you're not taking care of yourself, then what is it that you might be trying to share? What can you give if you have nothing? And the week prior, we talked about give, 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 give. But I, it's not always things. It's sometimes an encouraging word. Sometimes it's a, a smile. So, sometimes it's, it's, it's material things. But the bottom line is in rebuilding, we've got to slow the process down to make sure that what is going on in our life is good for us. It's, this series is all about um, being selfish. Yeah, yeah. I would like to be in church right now and I would like to have my choir singing behind me and I would like to have uh, my praise team singing, you know, because praise God, the Lord has blessed me. But this, what we're going through now, I, I think something great could come out of it. Uh, not only am I misplaced now, all the other churches in the country are misplaced. And so now people get to understand other people's lives and with the no judgment, you, you, you know, it, it's something that you could share. We must be tenderhearted during this time. And with the heart of God, we've got to understand that things come, adversity, struggles, come on, come on, and resistance to make us stronger. And it's amazing that a lot of people are like, we can't even get to church. Well, you weren't going to church when you couldn't get to church. Got the games. Got the games. I get texts now, Pastor, we're not having church. Come on. You don't watch the news? <laughs> Who are you fooling? The bottom line is, it's the heart. And so you've got to start building your character to be honorable. You've got to be honorable men and women. You know, the doors of Christ are always open. And now, now that you can't get in it, people are all upset. I tell you the story all the time about a playground that didn't have a fence around it. Janelle, I see you. The playground didn't have a fence around it. So the city put a fence around the playground. The same swings, the same teeter-totter, the same thing. They put a fence around it, and people cut a hole in the fence to get to the playground that they never went to get to before. People don't want you until you become unavailable. Woo! Rick Flair. Amen. Amen. So there's something about what's going on now. We're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn a lot from the process of what you're so used to having is not available to you anymore. Yeah. I, I want us to look in uh, Nehemiah 4th chapter. Nehemiah 4th chapter. Nehemiah 4. Nehemiah 4. Hold on. You know how these things are. Nehemiah 4. Nehemiah 4. Mac lipstick is on sale per my phone, Nehemiah 4. Okay, because you know, Nehemiah 4, you can't get in there without advertisement. Okay, go to Nehemiah 4 and uh, let's look at 17. Let's look at 17. Ooh when you have it, say amen. I'm just going to act like I heard it. Uh, let's go to 16. Let's go to 16. Let's go to 16. Uh, from that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other hand. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. So what is Nehemiah saying? Nehemiah is saying that whatever you're building, folk are looking to turn it down. Folk are looking to turn it down all the way from Dallas. I see it, Demetria. When you begin to build... The devil wants to 
get a hold to your progress, so to speak. The devil wants to get a hold to your progress. That means you, I don't know why it's not working because you've got to be diligently. You've got to be uh, steadfast and unmovable. When you begin to work, know that there's great things that, that's going to come about it, but you first got to be diligent about the work. And so what happens is we cannot listen or lend ear to things that are not with us or on one accord with us because it slows down the progress. And when it begins to slow down the progress, then you interpret and misinterpret that your lack of progress is because he doesn't love you. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to, to, to move along with you. He wants to progress with you. But he can't progress with you if you lend your ear to things that are not of God. And I'm not talking about perfection. I ain't, ain't nothing wrong with a little cutty sock on ice. Ain't nothing wrong with it. The bottom line is when you use that to hide yourself or to numb yourself because you don't feel that you've done the work that he's required of you. We must work. We must be diligent soldiers of the word. We must save souls. We must be witnesses out there. But we're not witnessing because our head is too busy being down and our shoulders are sunk in because we're not feeling good about who we are. The self-esteem of the church is just shot to hell. You got to, how can you not feel good about who he's created? Oh my God, I'm created in his likeness. That's why I had to reinvent because I was acting like some normal Joe off the corner. Whoa, corner. Yeah, right. You've got to stop acting like some normal Joe and act like who you are. Lineage to the throne, doggone it. I get so emotional and so excitable when it comes to this subject matter because we are moving as if this is not, this is not, all oh, this is not ours. All oh, this is mine. This is not my home, mind you. No, I got a home in glory. And I'm talking about, but while I'm here, oh, what? Why? Come on, come on. While I'm here, this Belongs to me. All of it. All of it. All of it. And if you don't want yours, then let those spoils. I'll take them. I am so greedy. I'll take them. I'll take them. But we've got to have the mind and the heart of God and un understand that we have to protect ourselves. We've got to be a, a, a particular. We've got to be precautious. And we've got to protect. Oh, three Ps. I like those. Particular. Precautious and protective. And touch not my anointed don't mean don't touch the preachers. You all get this straight. Everybody's anointed. Everybody's anointed if you receive that. I'm the righteousness of God. And that doesn't mean I'm better than you. It means I'm the righteousness of God because that was given to me. Not that I earned it and it was given to you as well. It is not what you ask God for. It is what you believe God for. I believe what the word says. I believe what the word says. And most of all, I believe, hey, my brother Eric, I believe what the word says about me. I am the righteousness of God. Whew. And everything that my feet trod upon is mine. Why? Because it's my father's. And I'm heir. I'm heir. I'm heir. Hey, hey. Adrian, I'm heir. And we've got to stop walking around like we're nobodies. When we really are somebody's, we're his, we're Christ the King's. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed that while I'm thinking of rebuilding, I'm amazed that <clears throat> how many people are what the world calls haters. No, 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 no. They are awed by the moves that I'm making. Mm -mm. We've got to stop thinking that folk. Are, are, are out to get me when at 50% of them are out to see how you do what you do. Yeah, I'm, I'm full of myself. I've been told that many times, but I, I can't lose with the stuff I use. And I use uh, the foundation of Christ, uh, the King, t for guidance and instruction because that's the stability in my life. It is my foundation. And so while others are out because the devil does send his imps out, out to destroy what I'm working on, I can't uh, uh, feel 
bad about that. I'm encouraged by that because that's the adversity and the struggle and the resistance that says, if I stand through this, after all is said and done, I'll be one of the last few standing. See, I cannot think that rain and storms won't come my way. They come my way. I just won't be one of the ones that are succumb to it. Right, right. See, so we can't be emotional beings um, cowering down to things that happen. Oh, the professor don't like me. The teacher don't like me. Don't nobody care about you like that. <laughs> I don't have time to think about that. I don't have time to think about the woman in the next office. I don't have time to think about the woman in the grocery store. I don't have time to think about the brother in the car. I don't have time. I'm too busy making something fabulous. Yes, I'm reinventing a soldier that the Zion, the new Zion, not the old church, but the new Zion can be proud of. Right. And so that comes with a sense of self-confidence, Greg Reed. That comes with a sense of comes with a sense of of of, of, of uh, grace. I'm thankful that he that he made me the way he made me. I'm thankful for that. Because the word is holds true. God doesn't make no junk. And while we're trying to figure out well, what's going on with the world, you forget what's going on in the world. You take care of you. Be a witness. And all these other things will be added to you. Yeah. Some of you forget that piece. In, in, in reinventing, you forget the piece that don't put your nose in that business. You just do what you're supposed to do. And the rest, it reminds me of Allen Iverson. You know, that's just what thought doing basketball. I'm putting my age on myself. But he had problems with coming to a practice because he had A game. And so this is how I look at life. Bring your A game all the time. Bring your A game. Don't tell me so and so and so ain't practicing. You bring your A game. <laughs> you bring your game. So now you can't play the way you should be playing. Because you're too busy looking at somebody else not playing. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. When you're reinventing you, when you're rebuilding your character, when you're investing in you, it takes 30 days to change any habit. 30 days to change any habit. Consistently do it. Consistently do it. Put some effort in. Quit asking God to do something you're not going to do. You won't ask God for stuff. He can't trust you with anything because you ain't did nothing with what you have. Oh, I take care of everything because I want a bit of bigger things. I want better things. I want more things. It is the reciprocity of God. He wants to bless you with good health and wealth. Yes. He wants to do that for you. But you've got to believe what you're asking God for versus asking him over and over and over and over and over for the same things. Once I, I make that request, my belief activates it. Yes, because the relationship that I have with him, the relationship that I have with the rock, the relationship that I have with my foundation is then solidified when I hit it with the word called the hammer. Yeah. Jeremiah 23 and 29. I hit it. It's like a hammer. The word is like a hammer. I hit it and I get back off of it. A carpenter doesn't hit a nail and then looks to see if it's driven in. He just knows by the way he strikes it with the word. He strikes it. It's over. And so once I put it on there, it's on there. I, I walk away from it. I don't dilly and dally. No. And I'm not waiting to see is God working in my behalf. I trust that he is. I trust that he is. And so we have difficulties in the house of God because we're bound by so many rules and regulations that are not biblically founded. What do you mean? I'm saying that some things, not my church. <laughs> Don't grab me by all of them though. Some things that churches are doing are not biblically founded. No. No, you show me some of the things that going on in the word, and then, then we can talk about it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Now, 
One thing is for sure that people will try to stop you from working on you. Now, what good is that? And that's why in Nehemiah 4, the builders had to secure weaponry to protect what they were building. Mm-hmm. Word of God. Word of God. Because people, people like you the way you are. Yeah. Because you're more valuable to them when you're doing what they would like from you versus what's best for you. And so anytime you try to change or make a variance of things, then there's a concern for those who are associated with you. That is a red flag for you to then take a step back and try to figure out why the heck were you in my life in the first place? Some of you got to figure out why they're your baby daddies. Yeah. Got to figure out why they're your baby mamas. Yeah. Why do I work in this corporation? What is it benefiting me? What is the value of me in this arena? You don't think like that because you're too thirsty. You're too happy to be a part of something just so somebody say that you're theirs. What? <laughs> if you don't have value on your own, don't nobody else want you. They're going to act like they want you. Because what time is it? Income tax. <laughs> Income tax time. you got to have value prior to the situation. Why, Sway? That's what I know. It's like that because folk have minds of their own. Right. And so if you don't protect you, who is going to protect you? If you don't think what you have is valuable, well, then why should I think what you have is valuable? Okay. Okay. Very important sermon that shots fired. Very important sermon I preached one time. It's called a good cookie. <clears throat> every cookie, every cookie, those of you who, who bake, those of you who bake, let me know. Those of you who bake. Every cookie, every cookie foundation is a butter cookie. Okay, give me some chefs out there. Hey, Tyronda, give me some chefs out there. Every foundation of every cookie starts with a butter cookie. Right. A butter cookie sells by itself. It's called, ooh, I should get advertisement. It's called a Lorna Doom. There's many of them, but the foundation is a butter cookie. Then, if you want to enhance the cookie, then you have to be something that would add to the taste of what's already good. Uh-uh! I'm a damn good cookie by myself. I'm not going to put broccoli with my butter cookie because it doesn't enhance. Some of you are seeking out broccolis for your butter cookie. Right. See, sometimes it's not other people destroying what you built. It's you destroying what you built. Because you're not using the rock in which you stand. Ooh. Mm -mm. So you should take off the, off the sword and take them off because you're destroying you. Right. This is where I, I, how I look at it. A butter cookie foundation is flour, sugar, blah, blah, blah. Butter cookie. Then what happened is somebody made this thing called a pecan sandy. <laughs> so they enhanced the butter cookie by adding a pecan. But the foundation of the cookie was good before the pecan. So if you want to add something to your formula, allow it to enhance and not tear you down. Don't steal that because it's mine. The butter cookie. And so until you are fortified in believing the qualities that you enhance from God are, is good enough, you'll never be able to be progressive. You'll never be able to totally reinvent because you don't feel as if you're total. You're always looking for something else to be added. But now that I'm working on my character, and now that we're working on reinventing, and now that we're working to be better people in our minds, in our hearts, and in our characters, not what we look like, but who we are on the inside, I've got to be okay. My self-esteem has to be lifted because the Word of God assures me that God didn't make any junk. 
So the totality of who I am is who I am. Uh Uh-uh. Write that down. I am who I am. The totality of who I am is who I am. I'm okay. I'm working on me. I'm good. I'm good. And you know what attracts others? When you are really fortified and reassured of who you are. It's not how much you weigh. It's not whether you got a big booty or big... No. I was speaking in tongues. (laughs) No. No. It's not that. It's that you're okay with the I am that he created. Yeah. That's attractive. That's attractive. And so while I'm continuing to work on me, I cannot totally work on me. I cannot totally work on me when I'm looking for something else to attach to me. I've already got to watch out for those who are coming to tear me down. But what's most important, I've got to watch out that I don't tear me down. I don't put in too much work. I see you, Ash. I see you, baby. Too much. Too much. I've got to focus this go round. I've got to do what's best for me. I've got to make this thing right for me. I do. I do. And I want to be better for the kingdom of God. I don't want to be better. Hey, Kiara, I don't want to be better. I don't want to be better. Just so I can tell somebody I'm better for the kingdom of God. Because my foundation and my root says it's important that I own up to that, that I'm better for the kingdom of God. Raise your hand if you want to be better for the kingdom of God. Raise your hand. Give me some, give me some hand waves if you want to be better for the kingdom of God. I can read. Send me some hands up in there. Send me some hearts up in there. I want to be better for the kingdom of God. He wants better for me. At that point, then it'll be easy for me to draw all men. I see you, Benita. I see you, Crystal. Okay, I see you, Devron. I want to be better. I do. And sometimes the devil get on me. Oh, KBJ, Crystal, Jess, Brian. Sometimes the devil gets on me too. And I just am so, oh, I'm just so down. I just can't do it. I, I, just, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to think about it. And those are the times that then I have to hit myself with the hammer. Hit myself with the word. See, it's a checks and balance in this series. Sometimes you got to line you back up. You know, don't be paranoid out there. Everybody ain't out to get you. Yeah, the devil seeks who he can devour. But you can't be one of those if you're a believer. But then if you're afraid to go out because you're afraid the devil's going to devour, you're still not a believer. Because the word of God says, whom shall I fear? What? Well, who came? The enemy came to eat at my flesh. What did they do? They stumble and fail. They stumble and fail. So I'm covered, but I've got to stand in my belief, which is the foundation, which is the rock of God. I'm excited now. I don't know what's going on. I'm just so excited about it. Let's go to 1 Peter 5 and 8. Let's go to 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 8. More advertisements. 1 Peter 5 and 8. Mm, mm, mm. Hold on, guys. I got to get that advertisement off the paper. When you have it, say amen. <laughs> it's just something preachers say. I, I can't hear you. You do know that, right? I can't. <laughs> okay, 1 Corinthians 5 and 8. You ready? It reads as such. Be alert and of sober mind. Okay, that's that level place. That's that. James 1 and 19, be quick to listen. That sober place, that sober place. James James is a good book to read simply because it's just succinct and good common sense. So in this particular case, it's important that you're of sober mind. And you can't be of sober mind, and this is not talking about liquor, so to speak. This is talking about the effects liquor can cause. And sometimes you don't have to drink to get these effects. You're, you're extremely emotional and, and, you, and, you, and you're irritable. It, the, you can't make decisions during that time. You cannot make major decisions when you're not leveled and founded on the rock. Some of us make decisions in the heat of anger or in the heat of passion. I'm not froze. I just wanted to look like that. Um, Some of us 
do that versus seeking wise counsel. Yeah, what the word say? Ebonnet, what the word say? What does the word say about the situation that you're in? And that's why I say it takes time sometimes. It takes time. It takes time. You all trying to rush the process. I know you want to change your life, but it takes time to see if what you're doing is really going to benefit you. Take time and work the process. Some of you are so busy trying to get to the finish line, but the real joy is the journey. The joy is the journey with Christ, not the end result. It's given to me. I will reign with him forever. But the joy is in the journey. The things that he teaches you, the way that he wipes your eyes when you cry at night, the, the way that he supplies in the, in the ninth hour. Come on, anybody got any ninth hour uh, he's ever supplied you in the last minute? He just came through. Those are the memorable places. It's those testimonies that draw people unto him. There are those testimonies. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But it says, resist him, standing firm in the faith. Standing. Foundation, standing, what are you standing on? Standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. It rains on the just and the unjust children. That's what it rains upon. But we are such emotional beings. Sometimes we have difficulty recognizing this is to make me better. He's not angry with me. He loves me. He loves it. God loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even during your eviction, he loves you. Because guess what? You could have paid your bills. Oh, okay. Huh. Sunday morning. I should be more kind on Sunday. Okay, let's go on. Let's go to verse 10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you had suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. It's just for a short time. All you got to do, all you got to do is weather the storm. Where are you in the book? I was in the first Peter um, um, five and eight. And we went down down to ten. Someone down in there. First Peter. This is just for a short time. So your cry should not be, you don't love me. Hey, Tasha Moore, you don't love me. He loves you. And that's why he's building the areas that you need to be rebuilt because you waver in those areas. You have no strength in those areas. What do I tell you? When you go to the physical therapist and they give you the resistance band, your foot is doing okay by itself, point and relax, point and relax. Then he says, put this around it and hold it. And then it's difficult then to point because there's some resistance. But the resistance is to build up the muscle. But you to be, it hurts. God ain't, 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 ain't moved by your tears. No, he loves you. And whatever he does to you or for you is to make you better. And so after you get over the Temporary pain, the temporary suffering. Isn't that what the word says? After you get over the temporary suffering, you're built for the things that you ask for. You're acting like he's putting on something, putting something on you that you didn't ask for. I, 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 want, I want that this. I want this. I want to be the head of my own company. I want to own my own business. Do you realize people who own their own businesses work harder? And then, then you want to murmur. You know what God says about murmuring? He's not a fan of it, children. And so while we're reinventing who we are, I must remember that I've got to lock up because I refuse to work this hard and let me or anybody else tear it down. Can I get an amen? I refuse to work this hard and let me or anybody else come and tear it down. So that's right. 
That's right. Don't come to me with no mess. Don't bring me no mess. I ain't looking to deal with your mess. Right now, I'm working on me. I got to get this right for the kingdom of God because I know once I do this, all men will be drawn unto him. I want people to see the progress. I want God to be pleased with the fact that I can obtain the breath that he's placed in me. I want him to continue to breathe on me because I'm worthy. Oh, be what? Why? Not because I'm full of myself, but because I am the righteousness of him. And when he rose again, he gave me all power. And doggone it, it's time for me to show that power. COVID-19? <laughs> what? Kathy Merrick, 2020, get with me. NBC, 2020, get with me. I am the righteousness of God, and I'm excited about the reinvention. I'm excited about the new Zion. I'm excited about all the things that he has for me. And most of all, I'm excited about all you all who attended this morning. Yeah. There's a word from the Lord. And I'm talking about a word you can just say. He's not looking for perfection. Get your drunk behind up. Yes, he's not looking. But there's a word from the Lord. He loves you. He loves you. You need to hear that regularly. Society is bringing us down. You're running scared. Some folk are not. Some folk are running scared. You're doubting yourself. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Hey, Alicia, he loves you. He loves even me. I remember they used to sing that song to me when I was a child. And in building and building my character and changing some things around and recognizing I haven't been perfect. But I know he wants to give me what I ask for, the desires of my heart. And then I've got to be strong enough to contend with what it takes for him to give it to me. So right now, I'm working on some things. Old folk used to sing this song, uh, there's a leak in this old building. <laughs> Ain't no leak here. <laughs> Ain't no leaks. There's no leaks here. I'm perfect in his creation. Just the way I am. Yeah. I'm perfect. Stop it, oh. I'm perfect in his creation. Yeah. Yeah. So this soul will dance with him and reign with him forever. But there's no leaks here. I'm moving in perfection. I'm moving in what he gave me. How many of you believe? How many of you believe that you're moving in greatness right now? You're going to start speaking that over yourself, Duji. Speak it over yourself, Duji. I am the righteousness of God. And I've got to protect what I'm working on. I've got to protect what I'm working on. I've got, I may not feel like it all the time. I may every now and then look in the mirror and don't feel the best about what I see. But then I've got to regroup and realize what I'm standing on. And what I'm standing on is what? Unmovable. Yes. Unmovable. And because I'm not standing on me, I'm standing on him. I am the righteousness of God. I want you all to type it right now and believe it. Say it. I am the righteousness of God. Some of you don't type that fast. I'll wait. I am the righteousness of God. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll call your name when you say it. Type it. I am the righteousness of God. Just put right if you can't spell the word. Okay, Sherelle, I am the righteousness of God. I see you. I see you. I see you. I I see you. I'm standing on him. I'm the righteousness of God. I am. Proclaim that over yourself. Protect you. Protect you. Quit allowing things in your space, things in your ear. I see you, Stephen. I am the righteousness of God. Janiah, I am the righteousness of God. Oh, Nisha, I'm the righteousness of God. Patricia, I'm the righteousness of God. Dr. Austin, I'm the righteousness of God. Kevin, I'm the righteousness of God. Q, I'm the righteousness of God. Brian, I'm the righteousness of God. Natty Geek Sullivan, I'm the righteousness of God. Coco, I'm the righteousness of God. Tasha, I'm the righteousness of God. Megan, I'm the righteousness of God. Phoebe, I'm the... Come on, you all. Come on, Paco. I'm the righteousness of God. Alicia, I'm the righteousness of God. Shayla, I'm the righteousness of God. Ashley, I'm the righteousness of God. Minister Kathy, I am the righteousness of God. Israel, I'm the righteousness of... You know what? Let's take over the world because what is mine is ours. Because we are the righteousness of God. Reverend Dawn, I am the righteousness of God. Every day I am the righteousness of God. And nothing shall come upon me that can harm me because there's no weapon formed against me that shall prosper. Why? Because I am the righteousness of God. And I'm going to protect what I'm working on. There is no leak in this building. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Black Beauty, I am the righteousness. Sandra, I am the righteousness. 
Chatera, I am the righteousness. I am. Kelly, I am. Aubrey, I am the righteousness of God. Cesarine, I am. And if there's names that I didn't see, Kirsten, I'm the righteousness. Rosetta, I'm the righteousness. I'm the righteousness of God. And I'm going to protect what I'm working on. Amen. My time is drawing out, and they're not going to turn me off and cut me off like they usually do. Anthony, righteousness. Kenny, the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. And I'm worthy of the things that I ask for because there is no leak. There's no leak, Phoebe. You're perfect the way you are. There is no leak in your building. The Word of God. How many of you had a good time this morning? Come see me on Wednesday. New Birth Community, African Methodist Episcopal Church, where the Word is real. And sometimes the pastor says a little too much and lather you in the Word. No funk. No chaser. Ain't no ginger ale. I'm going to give it to you. No ice cubes either. Just straight Word. I am. I am the righteousness of God. King's Court, I am. No leaks. Bubbles LaRue, no leaks. No leaks, Kim. No leaks. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Don't let nobody tear you down. They don't have that right. But what's more important is that you don't tear you down. Be careful how you treat yourself. The word of God for the people of God. Pay your tithes, children. Pay your tithes to the church that's giving you the word. Amen. Ain't nobody having no chicken dinners unless we're going to just eat them and not sell them. Pay your tithes. I do like ribs. <laughs> okay. Pray for me. Lord, bless this house in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. I love you. Hit me up on Wednesday. I love you. Thank you all who came by. I love you. New birth community. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you too. I love you too. I love you too, Sandra. I love you. I love you too, Kim. Come on, you know I love you. I love you, Sister Shirley. I love you, Q. That's right. I love you, Katisha. Amen. Amen. Ain't no leaks. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. And that's why I got to protect it. Amen. Bye-bye.